All right, here we have the Finerci HS02B soldering iron. We're going to go over it in this video, find out about it, check it out, maybe give it a little test run, heating up, and uh, see how it stacks up against the rest of them. All right, the soldering iron comes in a soft case, zippered. It's a kind of, it's a clamshell design, but it's kind of, it's got a little reinforcement to the case. It's not, uh, it's, you're not gonna sit on it and it survive <laughs> the case anyway. I don't think it'll hurt the soldering iron, uh, but it is a soft case. You can bend it, it is flexible. It's, uh, it's not a hard case. So when you open it up, I give it, not full marks because this is the extent of your instructions. And here's the English instruction. Uh, this covers the HSO2A and HSO2B. I believe the only difference between uh, the HSO2A and B are uh, the length of the uh, soldering tips. Now this right here is some extra ones that I got with it, uh, some C210 soldering tips. Another concern is how diminutive the soldering tips are. And my only concerns in size of the tip, which you've got a little meat here on these heavier duty uh, tips, is how well it'll retain heat. Now we are talking about a micro soldering iron. This is is not something you're going to go out there and start soldering uh, car battery terminals. For micro soldering, I believe these tips would be perfectly fine. So my secondary concern for these tips would be longevity. Being small, uh, heating up, cooling down repetitively uh, over a period of time, exactly how well they will last. So that would be my concern about the the I think it's a there's a C245 as well I think it's a little longer maybe a little beefier I'm not sure I don't have any of those tips to know for sure if you do please put it in the description or put it down in the comments to let me know uh, but you also have some JBC's uh, TS100 101's um, there's a there's a few other tips that are just it's there's some beef there so uh, I think those tips might be might tend to last a little longer, but these, of course, they are what they are. The the this is what the kit comes with. Of course, you have the uh, soldering iron. Then it comes with one tip, and it is what is this tip? It is a HSO2B-K, and so when you're looking at the tips, it's an HSO2B tip style K. And so that's kind of a knife edge or these tips are small. So I don't know if I would call that a medium or a large knife edge. I really don't have a, a lot of other ones to gauge by, but uh, looking at the one, the extra one that I bought, which is probably a little bigger. So maybe I'd call this a medium knife edge. So that's the tip that comes with it. Then you have a adapter, which this is barrel jack to USB-C. So you can power the Finerci uh, HS02A or HS02B with a, this barrel jack uh, adapter so that you can plug a laptop power supply or just in, in any, any one that'll fit with a center positive uh, plug. Uh, you can use a 19 volt power supply and this will perform in my, in my uh, understand or the way with my experience Perfect. Uh, you don't really need to go to the the PD 3.1 or the the higher voltage and uh, wattage. 65 watts is more than enough to heat this up fast and get the job done. In my opinion, uh, it's at least within the range of what this is intended for. All right. It comes with a soldering stand. Let's see if I can get this out. Uh, it's not a very big stand. Uh, the, I believe it was the off-brand soldering iron that came with a much better stand. But it's there's really nothing wrong with the stand. Uh, functionality, we'll get to that when we go to the head-to-head -head between each of the soldering irons. But uh, you've got a little sponge, put water on it, and it'll swell up. 
a very small area. Of course, we're dealing with a micro soldering uh, iron, so of course you don't really need a huge sponge. I think it would be kind of hard to get in there to brush your tip off. Uh, I really I have a uh, soldering stand that uh, I, I've got in that I think will work universally with all of these, and that's probably what I would uh, use for a go-to uh, stand. Uh, but I really don't see anything wrong with it. I think it's functionally just fine. All right, that leaves us with the soldering iron. So if you've noticed when I first, when I first uh, opened this up, I had all this in here. Now, originally this was up here and that's how it came. But my extra tips I put in here and the original tip I just set right here. And literally, let's see here, you can fit both of them just fine. Uh, you can fit, well, there was a little bit of a struggle there, but two of these, this is a little bit longer. So uh, two of these would fit just fine. You can almost get like four of these little cases. Now with the default case, it this fits in a center post and it's kind of snug to hold it in place. Uh, so it does, when you put it in here, it holds the, the tip without moving. And as well, or excuse me, so does this one, which is the, uh, let's see right here. This is the uh, extra that I bought. Um, these were a little cheap kit of some other ones and I just stick them in here and and they'll sit right in there just fine one in each corner so I could technically hold you know five tips in this case right here but this one the uh, hand grip is built in it's a uh, somewhat triangular uh, shaped soldering iron here's the USB uh, connector on the end of it twist it and it comes off. So you can take uh, this from directly from use, tip still hot, stick it on there, close it. Your tip is suspended inside of this aluminum uh, case and uh, toss it in your bag. You don't have to worry about anything getting hot, overheating. Uh, it can just sit there and cool down in, in, in the bag and you're, you're heading on to your next project. The throat is beveled. So you can't help but guide this in correctly. So you just stick it in there and it goes right in. And then the last little bit, make sure you push it home. And there, it's locked into place. That is not going anywhere. You don't have to worry about that whatsoever. Because I think that's, that's my understanding. The difference between the B and the A is the overall length of the, uh, the tip or, or the entire iron with the tip in it. So... Yeah, if you're gonna, if you, if you, and I don't know if that makes a difference. I don't know what kind of uh, plastic this is made out of, but when you set just the tip on there, uh, it's making contact. the The rim of this is making contact with this. Technically, I would assume that this right here would not heat up. So I don't know how nice that would be to use it in that fashion. More, most likely, you would have need to set it down like that. Uh, to, to hold everything in place. Uh, and it really doesn't fit that way, but you could quite just fine do it that way as well. So uh, again, the, the stand is functional, but I'm not really a fan of the stand. And I'll, I'll go ahead and plug it into the uh, high output PD 3.1 plug, but of course I won't get that, uh, that supply anyway. Let's see what we've got, it boots up. For nursey, it asks to press OK. We do, and it begins heating to the uh, initial preset of 350. I, it's kind of neat to have the the graph there bouncing around, kind of like that. It's it's a little neat, but I don't I don't really see that being extremely useful. And it is hot. I can feel the heat in the palm of my hand. Now I will say that this doesn't uh, it doesn't regulate quite so well to the set temp and see uh, I guess it'll get around to the 350 but it's 
got a lot of bounce and it probably may need to be calibrated. I'm not sure. Let's go to preset 2, which is 330. Preset 3, which is 360. And it was really almost there anyway. Back to preset 1, which is 300. So just a quick operation of it. You get it out and you start using it. Uh, hitting OK initially starts the device. Be aware that it will start heating as soon as you hit the uh, OK button on initial uh, application of power. Then you hit OK to cycle through each of the presets, which are already configured at 300 Celsius, 330 Celsius, and 360 Celsius. And then, of course, from any one of your uh, presets, you just hit the up or down arrow and you will move the uh, current uh, setting up by 5 degrees Celsius or down by 5 degrees Celsius. But before we do that, let's go ahead and drop her in some tip tinning. So that's the quick and dirty. We'll be right back in just a minute with some details and functionality of the HS02B Finerci micro soldering iron. Alright, so in uh, the sleep menu, let's go to the sleep menu and you'll hit OK to enter into the sleep menu. And so uh, you have sleep time, standby time, and sleep temp. So in 28 minutes it's uh, by default set to go to sleep. Then in 30 minutes it goes to standby so in 28 minutes it will the display will drop out and it will uh, basically uh, it'll still be on but waiting for you to pick it up and use it um, so standby time 30 minutes so in 30 minutes a few minutes after it goes to sleep it'll actually drop the temperature down to the sleep temp setting and so that's a uh, hundred. So the first uh, setting is sleep set. And so at the beginning of it, you have sleep time by default set to 28 minutes, standby time set to 30 minutes and sleep temperature in Celsius. Uh, so in 28 minutes, it will drop down to a hundred degrees Celsius and go into standby at 30 minutes, which you would have to hit uh, OK to uh, start it back up again. Okay, so the next setting we have here is handle set. We go in there and let's see, preset temp is giving you the information on that, 300 degrees, uh, showing you the voltage and power. You can set your step increment. So we were uh, stepping by five degrees Celsius, up or down. Uh, you can change that. Uh, powers at 65%. Temp calibration, which I, I don't have any way of doing a temp calibration, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. All right, so we went over sleep set, and then we went over handle set, uh, again, sleep set gives you your sleep settings and uh, what it's going to temperature in Celsius it's going to go down to when going into sleep or standby. And then handle set covers uh, multiple other options uh, about the power delivery as well as the um, percentage of power used, uh, calibration uh, for temperature calibrations. Now we'll go into the system set, hit OK. And here we can change the language. Uh, hand mode, we can set it to right-handed or left-handed. So basically if you're holding it in this hand, uh, the, the writing is uh, right side up for you to read or if you're holding it in your left hand for the writing to be right side up for you to read. Then uh, you can change your, your temperature unit to Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, you can turn the beep off. Uh, you can set the brightness of the display. You can upgrade the firmware, which you would do through the uh, USB-C port, and some details about 
uh, Fener CHS 02B version 1.4. And let's just take a look at languages. You've got English. Looks like it's going to be English or Chinese. So hand mode again. Let's set it for a left hand. And it goes upside down. And let's set it back to right hand so it's normal for me. Because I'm right sided. Then of course you've got Celsius or Fahrenheit. And here you can turn the beep on or off or adjust the, uh, the uh, loudness of the beep. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting lower and lower as you uh, go there. So let's turn it back on. I really don't care if it's beeping loud or not. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. All right. So once you get in a menu, if you get, uh, if it doesn't want to back out just by a single click on the OK button, hold it down and it'll back out to the, uh, the menu. So we've got language selection, Chinese or English, hand mode, right or left, unit, from Celsius to Fahrenheit, volume from 1 to 10 or off, and brightness from either uh, 1 to 10, and firmware update and about back up. So that's system. And again, oops, I backed out of it completely. Here we go. Handle. So in handle, you got the preset temp the voltage, the power percentage, which uh, I guess you can bump this all the way up to, or you manually bump it up to uh, full 90 watts, or I think this is 100 watts. Um, if you were going to be using the uh, PD 3.1, but uh, it'll automatically adjust to whatever, uh, depending on the cable and the uh, power supply that you're using and then again the sleep presets uh, the time it takes to in minutes to go to sleep to stand by and the temperature it's going to uh, reduce to going into sleep and then we'll there we go so let's see Hold the button on and it will drop down and go out requiring you to hit OK again just like it went to sleep. Alright, so I love that. I'm, it's growing on me, that rolling up and down. It's kind of old school like the old flip clocks. So uh, pressing both the up and down arrow for a uh, long press gets you to the menu. And you have sleep set, which will give you the uh, duration for uh, the solar iron going to sleep. Then you have uh, handle set, which will set it to left or right, and then system set. Okay, start it up. I've got it set low right now just to let it uh, there we go just uh, to let it adjust okay so I'm going to let it set there until it goes to sleep and then we will check uh, its response whenever we touch it we'll be back in just a moment All right, it just dropped into sleep mode. <laughs> Shows a nice little moon there with some Z's coming out. So uh, let's pick it up and see what happens. There we go. On movement, it starts to uh, regulate back up to the uh, initial uh, preset temperature. 